What's going on, everybody, and welcome to GNR Central. And let's get started with today's news. So it was revealed that Slash is uh, one of the songs that he proposed on his album, actually that ended up on his recent album, Living the Dream, was rejected by the TV show Walking Dead. So it's actually one of his best songs off the new record, uh, The One You Loved Is Gone. So um, Slash actually took it to the producers of AMC's Walking Dead, and they basically rejected it. So he gave an interview um, with Blabbermouth, and he revealed that he worked up a theme song for AMC's now mega-hit zombie show. He said, despite the executive producer Greg Nicotero having been known to be a huge Slash fan, the AMC series did not end up using his version of the intro. He said, initially the song was inspired, believe it or not, I wrote the intro for the AMC uh, zombie show The Walking Dead, Slash said. Because at that time, The Walking Dead didn't really have any other music outside of its score music. And so I was trying to push them to play an original song on there, but they wouldn't go for it. Because it's me and they don't want to have any recognizable existing names as part of The Walking Dead world. And so it never happened. She said, but it was always a good musical idea. And I introduced it to Miles to see if uh, he would come up, what he would come up with. Something so he could create a song for The Walking Dead. So he had some melodies and whatnot, but the lyrics became something completely different by the time we recorded it in 2018. He said, the song was called The One You Loved Is Gone. And it would have been a rare instance of The Walking Dead using songs with lyrics. Each instance has proved to be memorable so far. And, you know, when I listened back to the recording, I couldn't even believe that I had the balls to send it in. It was just a scratchy, unplugged electric guitar like, hey, I've got an idea, the musician added. There was no way anyone else would have been able to understand what I was hearing in it. But anyways, it was one of these ideas I stuck with because I thought musically it was pretty cool. I remember working on it with Miles here and there, and by the time the band started playing at rehearsals earlier this year... It had evolved into something a little different than what it was initially. Then Miles came up with this great verse and the chorus, and it shaped up to be a pretty song. So The Walking Dead airs on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, and Fear the Walking Dead is going to return for its fifth season in 2019. Turning now to some other Guns N' Roses news. So while Guns N' Roses was in Asia on their most recent leg of the Not In This Lifetime tour, uh, their keyboardist Melissa Reese gave an interview to People Magazine, um, their Asian uh, version. So uh, she posted it. It's kind of hard to read the entire article, but if you zoom in, you can read some of it. She talks a bit about her upbringing. Uh, it was revealed that she's uh, Filipino-American. I don't know what her background is, but uh, she mentions it in there. She also talks about some of the other projects she's working on besides Guns N' Roses. Uh, but if you guys are interested, I've linked to the interview down below and you guys can go check it out. It's about a two-page article uh, about Melissa Reese. So that pretty epic Saskatoon show that leaked earlier this uh, year online, I found another good version of it to stream if you guys are interested in it. The link is down below. You guys can go check it out. Let's go on to our next piece of news for the day. So turning now to some ACDC news. So it was revealed earlier this week that ACDC drummer Phil Rudd is going to be selling his New Zealand home. So buyers have the chance to live the life of a rock star with ACDC's drummer Phil Rudd listing his luxurious six-bedroom home complete with a stunning pool and entertaining area. So according to news.com.au, um, the six-bedroom property at 64 Harbor Drive in Automodal, Autom Automoda, I hope I said that right, in the Bay of Plenty region is made up of two apartments and has been owned by Rudd for the past nine years. So interested buyers will need some cash though with the property having a price guide of around uh, $3.9 million AUD, which is about $2.76 million US. So it's got about 586 square meters of space, which is roughly almost 6,000 square feet. Features five bedrooms, four living areas, two kitchens, and a swimming pool. There's even a five-car garage where Rudd keeps his Ferrari and McLaren sports, uh, sports cars. So Rudd was in the headlines, of course, back in 2015 when he was sentenced to eight months home detention on death threats and drug possession charges. And he's lived in uh, Taranga since the early 80s, and he even has his own restaurant called Phil's Place. He plans to basically stay in the region and is looking to downsize. So if you guys want to see more photos of his place, I've put the link down below. Another part of the article says, obviously Phil uses them as one large home, but they're quite cleverly designed to offer privacy and space to occupiers of each. Now, this is a story that may have caught your interest. This one's a pretty terrifying story. So you guys may have seen the news over the past couple days. There was a pretty big tsunami that hit uh, Indonesia. And uh, one of the thing, one of the uh, stories that came out of it was that there was a rock band performing on stage when all of a sudden they literally got hit by the tsunami and multiple members were found dead later on. So Indonesian alt rock band 17 are in mourning after a tragic concert incident on Saturday. So a major tsunami crashed into their stage as the band was performing. 
uh, basically striking a beach resort where the band was playing in West Java without warning after the eruption of a nearby volcano. So the Guardian reports that at least 222 people have died while over 800 people were injured and approximately 30 people are still listed as missing. Among those are the uh, band's bassist as well as the band's road manager. So the singer of the band confirmed the news in an emotional Instagram post, uh, which I've linked to below, in which he revealed that three other members of the group, as well as his wife, were still missing at the time of the posting. He said, we lost our bassist, Banny, and our road manager, and uh, some, uh, several other members of the crew, and have not been found, the vocalist explained. The rest are thankfully safe, although suffering from injuries and broken bones. Please pray so my wife Dylan, Andy, and Herman, and Ujon can be found soon. And uh, there's even news footage of the actual incident, so it's kind of scary. You see the band playing on stage, and then all of a sudden, the wall behind them comes crashing down uh, with water and, you know, takes people away. So while many rock fans are saying goodbye to bands like Slayer and Kiss, who are doing their farewell tours, uh, a lot of people thought Ozzy was going to retire, but he basically reiterated that his No More Tours 2 track is a bit of a misnomer. So he stated in a press conference for the tour earlier this year that the track was more of him scaling back his touring, and he basically said he'll still be touring in the future. So he said, people have gotten that all wrong, said Osborne, with it a dubbed a farewell tour. The tour should have been the Ozzy Osborne slowing down tour. What I'm actually doing is not going out on January 1st and coming back on December 31st. I'll still tour, but not as extensively as I've done for the last 50 years. The singer continued by saying, I have grandchildren now and I'm seven years old and I don't want to be found dead in a hotel room somewhere. I'm going to do it more at a leisurely pace and do some shows in Vegas, but I'll never stop. The whole lifestyle I've lived, it has come down to the fact that there are people who want to hear me, and as long as they want to hear me, I'm there. So while Osborne won't be going out for the entire year, in the future he will technically be playing both dates on the horizon, as he scheduled uh, an Ozfest, Ozfest event to take place at the Forum in LA on New Year's Eve. Uh, he's also going to be playing alongside Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson, uh, Jonathan Davis, Body Count, and more. So if you guys want to go find out more tickets about uh, more info about Ozfest, you can go visit the event website for tickets. We also have some news for you, Metallica fans. So. It looks like a rare Metallica show. Uh, their first show, actually, with Cliff Burton and Dave Mustaine has surfaced online. So on March 5th, 1983, Cliff Burton plays his first concert with Metallica after replacing Ron McGovernie in December of 1982. And just a bit over, uh, just over a month later, the thrash upstarts would undergo another lineup change when Dave uh, Mustaine was kicked from the band with Kirk Hammett joining the group. So if you guys want to go check it out, I've linked to it down below. So it's titled Cliff's first show live at the Stone in San Francisco on March 5th, 1983. So there was some Led Zeppelin news. So Jason Bonham revealed that Led Zeppelin frontman Robert Plant had ruled out the idea of a reunion tour the very time, the very first time the pair spoke about it. So the drummer who took the place of his late father, John Bonham, for 2007's uh, tribute concert admitted that he expected more shows to follow due to the amount of work the pair had basically put in alongside Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones. In the end, the Celebration Day event was the last time the band performed and Plant has consistently rejected the question of further appearances, even though other members of a time seemed positive about the idea. We did six weeks rehearsal for one show, so I was thinking we must be doing more, Bonham told Billboard, recalling that he discussed it with Plant after they attended a soccer match. On the way back, I said, I've got to ask you, are we going to get the band back together? And he said, I loved your dad way too much. It's no dis disrespect to you. You know the stuff better than all of us, and no one else who is alive can play it like you, but it's not the same. I can't go out there and fake it. I can't be a jukebox. I can't go out there and try to do it that way, he told me. When your father left us, left the world, that was it for Led Zeppelin, and we couldn't do what The Who did in continuing without Keith Moon. It was too vital. So Bonham also added that Plant kept the sentiment with a statement released in 1980 after his father's death, that when the band said, we wish, it, uh, we wish it to be known that the loss of our dear friend and deep sense of undivided harmony felt by ourselves and our then-manager have, have led us to decide to not continue as we were. And I got it, Bonham Jr. said. I was absolutely fine with that. My dad and Robert, they'd known each other since they were like 15. It was a lot deeper for plants, so I was okay with it. It was a great time, and to end it the way we did with that great concert, that was for the best. We needed to do one more great concert and then maybe put it to rest. So that does it for today's news, guys. Let me know what you think of the new format. I'm trying to do the GNR news first, and then any news that I would be interested in that would be probably related to Guns fans, I'm trying to cover that stuff as well. But mostly on the blog, I'm just going to be sticking to uh, Guns N' Roses news. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you love GNR as much as I do. And uh, wishing you guys happy holidays and, and safe travels if you guys are uh, traveling around the country, around the world. Take care. Hey, this is Dizzy Reed from Guns N' Roses, and you're watching GNR Central. Yeah!